Okay, first, first of all, I have to mention that it's not only going to be about earthquakes, but my dream has always been to kind of chase that Superman mentality and do something good for the world. So um, I actually have the plan to, to predict natural catastrophes, but I took the example of earthquakes because it's like less data to handle and I only have a small computer at home, so that's, that's the approach. Um, We've, we've all seen pictures like that in the news lately. That's from uh, the earthquake in Nepal, just the end of, uh, the beginning of last month, which caused about 8,000 deaths. So um, I think that's, that's quite something we have to change. And um, I mean, earthquakes don't only take li lives of people. They also um, destroy entire economies, and destroy cities, and affect us all globally. I mean, only if it's only reading the news and feeling empathy to this, these people. And um, it's gonna get worse since, I mean, we have global warming, which is an issue for, uh, say, uh, hurricanes and storms, which get more energy from the warmer seas. And um, our cities are denser and denser populated, so there's more people dying when something is happening. Um, so we need to change something. But uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't think there is, and I don't found a solution to kind of prevent earthquakes and catastrophes from happening. But I say we can do better at predicting them and get people out of there before something actually happens. Nowadays, um, prediction met methods are considered uh, to be too costly and too ineffective since like Earth is big and there's only a few events happening every time. So it's ineffective to Again, like observe the entire Earth and wait for something to happen. So um, we we actually get more and more eyes on our Earth, like companies like Copernicus, Eumetsat, and USGS, which kind of quantify every single aspect of our Earth and produce lots of data. And um, the the main approach in science is that there's patterns in everything, and we can find these patterns. And um, there's pretty a good pattern recognizing machine in all of our like minds and our brains, and we are good at dealing with lots of data at one um, time and extracting the main features and seeing when something bad might happen. I mean, we could do better, but we are pretty good. So um, why not just take these algorithms which might um, be used in our brains? and um, apply them to the data which we get from um, satellites and seismologists and like we could pretty much use any data. We just have to encode it into like binary vectors, uh, feed them into our neural network which I will now just treat as a black box but it's pretty complicated actually. And um, then you kind of decode the, the patterns you get at the output and you get your predictions produced by the neural network. And um, I, I mean, it sounds pretty, pretty big and kind of uh, high shooting, so I gave it a try because I wanted to have something here. Um, so this is an app I wrote, um, and the green dots are the ones with like a, no, a low anomaly score, which means basically the network um, has assumed with a probability of 90% or higher that there might be an event happening at that particular point in time, at that particular point in space. The red ones are either like, uh, like outliers or the first ones, which of course cannot be predicted. And you, you can see the learning process pretty well. That, oh, it's that one. So um, the upper one is one of the first earthquakes. You can see it's uh, number 204, which was one of the first uh, happening at that point. Then about 40 events later, you, you kind of, I mean, color-coded, it's, it's orange, so it's pretty much expected, and the model is learning. And about 200 events later, you it expected an event to happen at um, a probability of about 95%, which is pretty high. Uh, here's the San Andreas Fault, which, I mean, is, is a huge problem considering earthquakes. And um, you, I mean, it's, it's pretty impressive what's happening here. It's 
uh, pretty much anticipating every event more, with a more or less high probability. Uh, most of the red ones are the first, which cannot be predicted, of course. Um, so I say we can be uh, like uh, we can be prepared when something like that happens in real life, and there's no need to escape it. Uh, but we can be actually like gone away. Uh, and at a, a sooner point in time, and we can s save ma many lives. There's about 250 people dying due to like Earth every year, and that's too much, I think. So let's let's just give it a try and help them. Thank you. The intention is very good. Uh, there's a lot of people working on earthquake, um, mm -hmm. and it's not easy to predict earthquake. Uh, what kind of software would you think using it in these 12 weeks in order to do a little contribution to this important problem? Okay, um, there's this framework called NewPick, which is kind of set up by a company in, in San Francisco that I've been, it's, it's open source, so I kind of started contributing to that. And it, um, yeah, basically um, tries to take the algorithms which are found in neuroscience and tries to implement them in, uh, in a like neural network fashion.